Hi everyone, Elit here for 3D Natives, and today we are going to be having a look at the MakerBot Mesedex Carbon Fiber Edition. This FDM 3D printer is made in the US by MakerBot. They have been making 3D printers for 12 years now, starting out in 2009 with 3D printer kits and making professional pre-assembled 3D printers. The Mesodex was announced in 2019, one year after the launch of its younger sibling, the MakerBot method. They both are industrial grade 3D printers featuring an actively heated build chamber, two integrated material storage bays and two extruder slots. Despite its medium size of 437 by 413 by 649 mm, the printer came on a pallet. That's because it came with a separate unit to clean the SR30, which is a support material developed by Stratasys, MakerBot's parent company. We proceeded to unbox the printer and once the top part of the cardboard was removed, we were greeted with all the accessories and paperwork. The accessories were all nicely laid out in some foam and they include an iron steel magnetic build plate, a spare build surface, a spatula to remove prints from the build surface, a pair of angled cutting pliers to remove support material and three extruders. We then took all the protective foam away and took the printer out. Regardless of the printer's dimensions, it is pretty dense, as it comes in at 29.5 kilos. We do recommend getting some help to get it out. In addition to the printer, we received a support cleaning apparatus machine, some waterworks solution, which is used with the machine to dissolve the SR30, and one, two, three, four rolls of filament. The Mesedex Carbon Fiber Edition is very sturdy and well built. Its boxy yet stylish design is made of metal and plastic. MakerBot obviously went for a compact and minimalist printer, as the whole motion system is hidden. The heat cartridges and the motor aren't visible either. After having unboxed and installed the printer, we got on with the calibration. As prompted by the 5 inch color touch screen, we connected the printer to our Wi-Fi network and registered it to our MakerBot account, which is the same as our Singiverse account. We did find the touchscreen a bit buggy sometimes when using the kit board to set the Wi-Fi up. We then installed the two extruders, the top lid and the spring steel print bed. Finally, we loaded the two filament spools. The calibration was really intuitive thanks to the clear instructions and animations on the printer's touchscreen. The quick swap extruder system and the plethora of sensors really make this printer satisfying to use. It's an intelligent machine which is able to guide you and even diagnose problems on its own. It's even able to recognize MakerBot filaments thanks to the RFID technology as well as check material and extruder compatibility and detect extruded jams. Additionally, it gives you advice on how to use or store the filaments you use. Now that we have talked about unboxing and setup, let's talk about the most important part, printing. As soon as we had finished setting up the printer, we decided our first print would be a wrench from the Made in Space project. We downloaded the model and imported it into MakerBot Print, the proprietary slicer used for all MakerBot 3D printers. Thanks to the printer's wireless connection to the cloud, the slicer knew exactly which filament and which extruders were installed and tuned the slicing profiles accordingly. We didn't have any particular tweaks to make to the default profile, so we sliced the model and printed it. Our ABS wrench came out very nicely and didn't show any signs of imperfection. We continued printing with ABS with a model of the Statue of Liberty. It's a highly detailed model which requires supports. That's why we decided to test the printer's ability to print soluble supports, thanks to its second extruder. We used SR30 as support material, 
slice the model, printed it, and then dissolved the SR30 thanks to the support cleaning apparatus machine. The print turned out great and the little details were well reproduced. Afterwards, we wanted to test the printer's tolerances, so we printed a kind of fidget toy called a Kaleido Cycle. It's a print-in-place model with very low tolerances. After removing the print from the bed, we were happy to see that the joints could all come free and move as planned. We also printed a tolerance test spinner to determine the tolerance of the printer, which validated all the tolerances up to 0.2 mm. We printed an embroidery ring, which is made out of a screw and two rings. The so three parts printed nicely, but the tolerances of the model were too large as the screw slipped from the outer ring. After ABS, we tried out carbon fiber reinforced nylon, which is also called PACF. Our first print was an arm designed to connect the suspension and the wheel of an RC car. We used PACF as it's needed to be a strong and rigid part. Our part came out as designed and fit our car perfectly thanks to its tight tolerances. The printer was able to handle our PSCF prints easily thanks to its composite extruder, the 1C, and its pre-configured profiles. Finally, we tasted ASA prints. It's a material similar to ABS, but doesn't degrade under UV radiations like the ones emitted by the sun. We printed an astronaut sitting on a planet. We used SSR30 as support material, but a bit after mid prints, the perch tower fell and some filament got caught on the print. Thankfully, after some manual cleanup with the cutting pliers, we were able to have a nice astronaut. We experimented a lot with the Method X, and after a few hundred hours of printing, we are happy to see that the machine is still as easy to use. The Method X almost makes you forget how hard the materials normally are to print. It seems like it can handle almost any material you throw at it. Despite its ease of use, we did run into a few bugs regarding the printer's touchscreen. And we were a bit disappointed to see that the power button only turns the printer on and not off. So, when we had the touchscreen bug, the only way to turn the printer off was to unplug it. We hope that MakerBot will consider making the power button turn the printer off in a future update. All in all, we think that the MakerBot Mercedes Carbon Fiber Edition is a good 3D printer for anyone wanting to print technical materials without having to do any complicated extruder swaps or profile fine tuning. At a cost of 6,999 euros, the Mercedes Carbon Fiber Edition seems like an interesting machine for a company without any experience with 3D printing or for an engineering or design school as it guides the user during every step. In the meantime, anyone looking for getting into 3D printing more advanced materials should definitely have a look at the MakerBot Mercedes Carbon Fiber Edition. All things considered, we gave the MakerBot Mercedes Carbon Fiber Edition a overall score of 9 out of 10. If you want to learn more on how we got to this score, check out our written article on 3dnative.com by clicking here. Thanks for watching our review of the MakerBot Mercedes Carbon Fiber Edition. If you want to see more tests, click here. See you on our next review on the 3D Natives Lab.